Hello and welcome back to the second part of our video tutorials covering mesh interactions and particles. And in this part we would like to cover the shading aspects of the particle systems. So disable the avoid tools for now and changing the style mode of our particles to the line mode. Increasing the size as well as adding some size variants to the particles as well. Um, we also want to create a color over life gradient so that our particles are fading out or getting darker towards the end of its lifetime and adding some bluish high dynamic range color at their birth. And in order to see it, we have to change the output of the renderer to floating point. We also want to align the direction of the lines to its movement by changing the rotation mode to rotation relative to motion and disabling align to camera. Since 1000 particles are not enough, we are increasing this number to 10,000 to get a result like this one. And this is where you can also see the advantages of floating point rendering. Enabling the avoid tools. And just wait until our particles are rendered. Of course, this can take a while, dependent on mesh complexity, on frames you have to pre render in order to get your first frame, or the frame you want to render, and something like that. But since 10,000 particles are created each frame, you can easily calculate how much particles we have here in this system right now. So. That's the result. Again, enabling and disabling the auto gain feature of the display itself. And let's begin and add some color correction steps to it. At first, we copy the alpha value to the colors since we want to add a color variance dependent on the density of the particles itself, decreasing the gain, gamma as well changing the contrast and blur it a bit and use a color correction node to um, assign different colors to the darker and brighter areas of the particle system. Go to the ranges tab to separate the highlights from the shadow areas a bit more, adding some orange yellowish color to the midtones as well and multiply this image over our original rendered particles using a channel boolean tool set to multiply. So basically we have two color gradients now. Our density based result and the original rendered image from the particles which has a gradient over the lifetime. We use a brightness contrast tool to bring down the result of the uh, channel boolean tool, increasing the separation, use another brightness contrast tool, and this time decreasing the gain, increasing gamma, decreasing saturation very slightly. Adding a blur node to the system and overlay this one over the result of the previous brightness contrast tool to get a result like this one. Add some variations to one of the uh, previous tools. And finally, add a soft glow to the system, changing the values, for example, gain and the glow size, to actually simulate what flames do to glow. So the final result can look like this one. Of course, you can download the com compositions used here in our video tutorials from VFXpedia and play around with the compositions shown here as well. Like in this case, I used 
a bitmap sprite instead of the lines to create a particle system like this one. And yeah, if you combine both of them, which is the output of this one, actually an overlay of both uh, systems, you create, create and get those nice looking fiery flames. So thanks for watching. Um, this video tutorial covering particles and mesh interactions and yeah thanks for watching and bye